Uh, we want to talk about education because we have a guest who has gotten firsthand experience about the gap when it comes to education between the United States and other countries. Well, we think we're number one, we're the best, right. but his findings would indicate otherwise. We'd like to introduce you to Keith Ballard. He is a middle school teacher from San Diego, and welcome to the show, Keith. It's an honor and pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. What for got you me. interested in doing this? Well, um, you know, Sheer frustration. Mm -hmm. I've been teaching for 17 years. Uh, I was a 2003 Milken United States National Educator, and I knew something was wrong, and I could see it in the generation. So I, I researched this, and I decided to go to China and India for 30 days. I looked in, inside 22 schools, and let me tell you, it's not just a little bit better, it's a whole lot better. And uh, specifically China, here's how I try to describe it since we all seem to understand the game of football here yeah. in America. The Chinese public educational system is so good. It's something like the NFL, the National Football League. Sorry to say, in America, folks, we're playing no better than high school football. That big a gap. Wow. It is, it's, it's astounding. Is and it just the time that the kids spend in the classroom or is it greater than that? Well, it's a number of things. Number one, um, I was in 22 schools and never saw a discipline problem and um, never saw an unruly student. I couldn't say the same thing about uh, that here. I mean, discipline is out of control. A lot of administrators would disagree with me, but control is relative. You wanna see control, go to China and India, Singapore, that's control. Does that go back to the family? It, 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 you know, and it all starts with family. Our first, second, and third big greatest problems here in America are family, family, and family. You know, the nucleus of the family, and just the, the, the culture, the con culture in China is based on Confucianism. Um, you know, respect thy neighbor, respect elders, uh, respect your parents, respect teacher. I mean, teacher is huge. Almost you know, sacred, yeah. Sacred. But, you know, here are some of the, the other things. They start kindergarten at age two over there. A lot of people over here say, oh, well, that's horrible. Be with your kid. But, you know, the bottom line is the, the majority of our kids are sat in front of televisions for, for the first four or five years. Yeah. American Pediatrics Association says absolutely no TV the first two years. Um, uh, um, vocational schools, they, um, they, they understand that not everybody's going to go to college. You know, our no child left behind left so many kids left behind. So about 50% of their kids actually are put into great vocational schools. So when they exit high school, they have a real job where a lot of our kids don't have much at all. They can't even find a minimum wage. Well, and we've taken away those classes, shop class, oh. auto class. We don't even offer those anymore. You know, I don't know who's running the system. In, in Sacramento, but I'll tell you what, they got it really wrong. They need to come and ask guys like me at the ground level. I'll tell you what, I'm not just saying this, but I think I could fix things a lot better than what they're doing over there in Sacramento. Keith, someone argue there's just no money. We're in tough economic times, we have to cut costs. Well, there's no money. You know what, and here's the clear difference. In China and India, this is how they've, they've, they've made education the highest priorities. So in, in, in China and India, where you have these robust economies on fire, they have basically tied their education system with their state of the economy. So they've made it the highest of priority here in the United States. We continue to treat education as a social problem. So it's all about priorities. There's money, but you know, money is spent on wars and things like that. And you know, do we need to be in 160 countries with our military? Do we really need to? I mean, you know, I'm not sure about that. Well, the education used to be a priority here. So what you saw over there, does that bode well for them in terms of overtaking us when it comes to technology and innovation? You know what, um, our, the way we stay competitive here is with our H-1B-1 visa, America's uh, genius uh, visa. Our secret weapon, it's not our public school system that's kept us competitive. And the majority of those people that are brought on H-1B-1 visas that work in Silicon Valley, mm -hmm. in the brain, they're, they're Chinese and Indian. They're from China and India. You know, we owe, the, we owe Indians a great deal here. They've not only grown entire industries, you know, they've made a lot of people wealthy. So um, it's not our education system. You know, we need to just wake up here in this world. Uh, I was just listening to a report with Dan Rather. We're just not globally competitive. And you know what, who's really not globally competitive? 
are educational administrators. Most of them don't even know what they're competing against. When we talk about competition here in, in San Diego and in Sacramento, what are we competing against? We're competing with the district next door or the school next door. That, that's, that's irrelevant in a global economy. We should all be together economy. competing against another country. The, the real message is how are we competing against uh, Qingdao number 51 or Shanghai?